Tech Team Weekly. This show may contain mature language and themes. Hello, welcome. It's Tech Team Weekly. I am joined by your fabulous co-host, Gwen, Di- Gwen Diagram. Gwenny, hello. Good morning. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Great. Great to see you. And of course, Neil Studd. Studdo, how are you? Hello. I am better than I sound. I'm still getting over the after effects of this horrible cold. It's just now all in my throat. But uh, yeah, no, pretty good. Cheers. Okay, great. Um, audience, you missed a really sexy start to the show. I'm sorry, we weren't recording. We got a lot of flashing of skin, <laughs> particularly from Neil. Yeah, it was, it was great. Really sexing things up, you know, a great way to start start the morning. <laughs> so today on the show, we've got, uh, we're going to go into our stand-ups, of course, as usual. We've got social engineering, where we're talking about what you're talking about. We've got this week's Epic, which is going to be about online surveillance, particularly of kids and this one particular company. Uh, We have our news bites, if we have time, as as always, and then we'll wrap up with the uh, wash up. So here we go into the stand up, Studdo. The stand up. At Postman, I am taking part in a live stream this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. UK time. It'll be on Twitch and Twitter and YouTube and all all the Postman channels. They they do a weekly live stream. Uh, I'm going to be pairing with a developer uh, and showing them how to write tests in a really easy fashion, like when you've got no time, how you can get some quick wins out of Postman. So that'd be good fun. Uh, I may also have a blog post going up this week. I don't know how long their approval process is. It may take another week or more uh, before that actually happens. I still haven't been allowed to install Windows 11. Microsoft have not unlocked the doors. I'm going to keep repeating it every week to humiliate them until they allow me to install their free OS. Um, Very excited that tomorrow there is finally the Google Pixel 6 unveiling event. I've been stuck on the Pixel 3 for a while. Uh, My contract ran out in the summer and I was like, there's no point in going to a 5 because the 6 is so close. And then they've kept pushing the date back or not announcing when the date's going to be. it's it's tomorrow it looks like the, the phones will be dispatched maybe a week or so after that so fingers crossed that'd be good uh and i ventured out into the wide world this week i went to a, a comedy show a filming of the no such thing as a fish podcast uh, last night before we were recording um and they had me up on stage uh, it's uh, too too complex a story no to get way. into right now yeah um they were having a awesome. competition to find the the biggest nerd in the audience uh, and i got down to the final two uh, due to an obs- <laughs> due to an obscure <laughs> <laughs> due to an obscure entry that i have in the guinness book of records um it's it's too complicated a story to get into now wow. but um, yeah i i'm in there for uh, okay. nerdy reasons uh so i'm i'm bloody exhausted it has been like a megaly exhausting week um so i have holiday next week which i'm like so thrilled about but it means that i've had to start and like finish things really really last minute so uh yesterday i had two high stakes presentations to the CEO, but uh, I had like zero time to do them because I was in like, oh, I was probably in like six hours of meetings yesterday. So trying to sneak time, woke up early, but yeah, it was just very, very intense and all very last minute. But uh, it was a gamble the way I was doing it and it paid off. Um, Really good feedback from the CEO, um, telling some hard truths and it all worked out. So yeah. Thank God for that. So uh, really thankful for that. Like I've done so, so many presentations at conferences over the years because it just means that I can like slam things out really quickly and make them engaging, I think, I hope. Um, but that's what mm. it seemed to be. Um, and yeah, like so thankful to my amazing colleagues, Johnny and Alex, for like helping me get all the information together as well. It was brutal. But then um, on Wednesday, It was really, really nice. I went out with the head of marketing, who's also the head of sales now, um, and Johnny, uh, one of my other colleagues, on Wednesday night. Um, So it was the first time I'd met Chrissy in the flesh, and it was just so nice to hang out with her. And also very incredible to find out the perception of engineering from a sales and marketing side, something that uh, I really need in my position so that I can work to improve it, of course. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for things I learned and just hanging out with Johnny and Chrissy because I love them so much. Um, and yeah, like, I am just so, so fucking excited to have a holiday. <laughs> like I am ruined. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's me. How about you, Sanj? Awesome. Um, well, I mean, I've I've still been having good weeks. I mean, it sounds like you had a really <laughs> tough week. So yeah. I think it might have something to do with the fact that I'm still not yet working, which I'm not complaining <laughs> about, but it's coming. It's literally it's days away. 
So yeah, I, I'm I'm enjoying the last of my freedom. Um, I did get a, a chance to catch up with my new manager, who uh, I haven't worked with in, uh, before, but um, she's awesome. So I'm really looking forward to to working with her. I'm going to be working in the same sort of general department with a lot of my old mates from Sky as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we've got fuel now in London. You'll be happy to hear, Neil. Um, I know you enjoy taunting me on Slack. I'm sorry to <laughs> put an end to that. You know, maybe you can find something else. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's I mean, been awesome, you know. I, can, I, can... <laughs> I mean, I've driven across country in the last 24 hours. I've driven 400 miles in 24 hours. So uh, I've been using fuel for fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just burning it because. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, my my life's still pretty good. I had lunch with Pete. I'm going to have dinner with Leon. Um, I'm brushing up on some of my tech stuff, you know, uh, some new tricks I want to pick up, um, some new projects I'm going to be working on. I'm excited about that. It's Black Tech Fest. Um uh, this week, it's literally, literally starting tomorrow by the time people will be listening to this. Um, uh, um, I am looking forward to that. There's going to be a few really cool speakers. And I want to give a shout out to, um, there's a conference called State of the Browser, which happens every year. I spoke at it a couple of, couple of years ago, and there's, uh, it's at the end of the month. It's pretty cool. Everyone should check that out. Social engineering. Social engineering. Brilliant. Okay, so uh, we got feedback from Lee, multiple Lee this week. So, uh, yeah, we got feedback from Lee Rathbone, um, and Lee tweeted, really enjoyed this episode. Another great episode. Loving the podcast. I tend to watch it on YouTube. It's really well thought out, feels fresh and different. It's re-energized me. Thank you. Um, oh. And, yeah. Thanks, Lee. We love you too, mate. We think you're great. So, yeah, glad that it's bringing you some joy. And uh, mm -hmm. the other Lee, Lee Hawkins, it said, uh, thanks for another interesting episode, Tech Team Weekly. You managed to cover some serious and deep content while also making it feel like it's three good mates just having a chat. So well done mm -hmm. on keeping it real. So, yeah, thanks mm -hmm. to both Lees. Really appreciate you. I had some in-person feedback this week from a friend of mine, Katie, uh, who uh, listens to the podcast slash watches the podcast and says it's a really good way of keeping in touch with what I'm up to because we don't get to speak enough. So <laughs> glad to, to be just, <laughs> my social calendar get, gets published once a week. Uh, it's very useful for us. So, uh, yeah, on other fronts, <laughs> on, on the old uh, podcast driven development side, um, tickling along, tickling, ticking along quite nicely. It's going um, in terms of Twitter followers, Facebook followers, uh, not Facebook followers. We don't have a Facebook page. Uh, what's the other thing we do? Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. That's Which the one. LinkedIn. Um, yeah. If you if you look at the graphs on our website, they're all they're all you know gr going gradually up. Uh, this one thing we did this week is an interesting experiment. We put our first ad out on uh, LinkedIn. We literally just um, made our episode seven announcement post available as a sponsored post. So it was put in front of people from particular backgrounds. We, we selected which uh, product disciplines we'd like to see them. Um, it had some impact by the looks of it. If you look at those graphs, uh, particularly episode downloads on, on podcast feeds, there's a definite uptick that we can't attribute to anything else. Like it's slanting slightly higher than it has in the previous weeks. Um, so possibly some people have, have clicked in. It'll be interesting to see if that carries on this week. I think it's worth not advertising this week just to see whether it goes back to how it was or whether we, mm. you know, we, we stick with some mm. of that. Um, but advertising is a difficult game. Uh, when, when you, there's a really good like stats dashboard in LinkedIn that shows you, you know, your click through rate percentage. Um, we're about normal. I think we've got like 0.6% of, of people clicked through who saw it, which is about average. It's terrible, particularly mm. the amount of money you throw at it. But um, it also means that basically we, we've um, we pay people uh, or it, it's a, we, we pay LinkedIn £2.50 per person who's clicked through to our website, which seems like a lot. <laughs> like if we stood in the street and gave people two quid, I'm sure they'd click on our <laughs> website. Like uh, maybe it's not, it's not the platform for us right now, uh, but it's been an interesting experiment. We get to run them again in the future, maybe see how Twitter posts uh, sponsored do instead. Uh, but yeah, interesting times. Yeah, we could even look into something like Reddit, right? We could do like a sponsored post on Reddit. There's a lot of techie kind of subs there. Yeah, I've done a couple of one-off sort of posts on like uh, subreddits for advertising new podcasts. Um, didn't get a lot of stuff mm. on there, but uh, sponsoring, mm. um, certainly something we could think of. This week's epic. Hope you like the sound of my voice because I've got a lot to say on this one. So the story here starts uh, in this Guardian article in in... Uh, they write about uh, this kid in the U.S. Uh, who was going through some really, really dark times, some really hard times. And, you know, uh, thankfully, you know, they pulled through and, you know, they're in a good place. And so they're doing an assignment and they're really opening up to their teacher. 
and they're and they're writing to them about you know all of the dark times that they went through and the positive good place that they're that they're in now and how you know things are are getting better and they they're in control of their lives and they mention the word suicide so it gets flagged right and what actually happens behind the scene is there's this company called Gaggle which is searching for keywords right and this is one of the keywords that they're searching for and their process is they then go and contact the school and then the school makes a decision on what what has to be done right Schools uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, report that uh, they're uh, monitoring from a range of 64 to 16 percent that they can track logins, view student screens, monitor keywords, close tabs, and even take control of the PC. That's not only limited to school-issued devices, but accounts that they ask students to make, which are then linked to their school. There is some bias here. Let me, let me put it that way. So there are reports that this is harming LGBTQ plus kids. So in one example, they have uh, and uh, they say they have the word gay flag to stop people looking at porn. Um, but of course, gay isn't inherently sexual. You know, people could just be talk about, talking about being gay or, or lesbian or, or their feelings or asking questions. And, you know, that's not necessarily inappropriate. And should that really be spied on, you know? Um, it also disproportionately surveils lower income kids because they're less likely to have devices of their own to use, you know, outside of the school issued ones. There are societal biases here when people have to make judgment calls. Black students are suspended and expelled at higher rates throughout the school years. Black girls have it worse. And then even better news, dark skinned black girls have it even worse. So as the, yeah, I know it's, it's, I mean, it's, this is not good stuff, right? So as, as the lockdown hit, Gaggle reported that there was a fourfold increase in harmful behavior. They monitor for things like suicide, violence, sexual content, drugs and alcohol, and harassment. They claim that they saved over 1,400 kids' lives last year. Um, this, unfortunately, this is, this hasn't been independently verified, which is, you know, some of the, some of the um, issues that other journalists are sort of raising around this, right? That in one instance, technology led to the arrest of 35 year old Michigan man who tried to send pornography to an 11 year old girl in New York. Now, according, this is according to the company. Uh, so in this case, Gaggle prevented the file from ever reaching the intended uh, recipient. I, I started the story. Uh, I'm not sure really which side to be on. I'm not sure how I feel about this because I started this very much like, you know, um, how I think this conversation is going to go. And definitely the, a lot of how a lot of the social feedback, the social media feedback we've gotten has gone, you know, that this is not good. But, you know, they do seem to be doing some good stuff. There does seem to be some good interventions here. You know, in their own documentation, they list a lot of uh, examples, actual cases that they say have happened of things that they've prevented we're talking about kids here. There's also another angle. So there's there's this uh, uh, new startup called Aware in the U.S., which has raised you know uh, 60 million or something in like uh, the latest seed round. Now this is this is a tech that monitors uh, the same sort of thing, but for adults. So it's built for like corporations and businesses to sort of use. Um, this is like. I d I'm not sure where to sort of begin here. I mean, we have the you know, is it right to be monitoring kids? It feels like the kids are not aware that they're being monitored. You know, and how, wh where are the lines here? Yeah, it's difficult when the kids don't know that it's happening. I mean, I have signed up to some companies who have very complex IT security policies that mention things like that. Uh, I certainly have experience, uh, maybe I'll talk about later, of an incident where I was incorrectly flagged in the workplace for something I wasn't doing because of keyword analysis. Right. Um, but when it when it's kids... <sighs> it's it's really tough i think you have to look at who is consuming the data and for what purpose and you know who's who is seeing it who is acting upon it i mean there are certain frankly in in the us there are certain things they probably ha are looking for red flags for um incidents to horrible mm. incidents that happen in schools um that you know mm -hmm. if you have a keyword that catches someone talking about i don't know guns or something very specific mm -hmm. uh, it's probably mm -hmm. worth putting that in front of someone who is responsible enough to make a judgment call but yeah, then you get down to well, if it's a a deeply personal situation that's it's a confidential conversation between between two people, like the teacher and the student in this case, where the student believed he was only um, sharing his experiences and feelings with his teacher in a confidential environment. Then you say, well, mm. actually, we're going to allow potentially all, I don't all of Gaggle's employees or, or whoever is processing that data to look at this and then make a decision about who else they want to contact about it. Um, it, mm. it's it, it's dangerous that's, that's the, the most uh the thing i could say about it i think so being monitored without 
being told and uh, that being brought up is a horrible feeling. So back when I first started IT support, like, oh, a long time ago, but I used to send emails to my sister on my work account and my boss was like, you can't do that. I've been reading your emails. And I'm like, why did you not tell me that you had access no. to my emails? Like, and why are you reading them? You creep. And it, mm. it made me trust him a lot less. And I should have trusted him a lot less because he was a creep. But besides that, um, yeah, it's not nice. And you have to tell people that you're monitoring them and what they're getting flagged up for, as well as the, mm. the part with the 35 year old man sending pornography to a, a young girl. So there's many different ways that you can check for pornography. So there's filters mm -hmm. that you can put in, which will check for the amount of pink in a picture to see if someone is naked in it. You don't need to monitor them in that kind of way. Like, so yeah, mm -hmm. like there's a lot more, there's easier automated systems than that. And they have existed for a long time. They existed back when I was in IT support at a different company, but yeah like uh 12 13 years ago and yeah it is a bit more harsh but yes and this comes back round to what we see whenever you do any kind of machine learning training algorithms as well where it is biased to mm -hmm. uh, performing mm -hmm. better with data related to generally white males um so yeah any any attempts you make to, to do false positives or false negatives um may behave erratically when you put them in front of people you're not expecting and that may well include children you're probably not even using you know if, you, if you're establishing what are the rules for an adult conversation an adult conversation between children is probably very different to an adult conversation between adults it's probably completely yeah. different later if i'm reading the room right do you feel like there's some benefit here like we kind of need to be doing or you you both think no so not in the way that it sounds like they are doing it um mm -hmm. no and I would rather that children weren't monitored. I don't want, I don't want to be monitored. Why should children be monitored? Um, mm. I, I grew up in quite a monitored household and I didn't like it. Um, it's horrible. Um, and yeah, it, it makes people act out in different ways when they're monitored, yeah, they yeah. start hiding more things. Um, and mm -hmm. if you're, if you speak about suicide at school and it gets flagged up, you're not going to speak about it at school anymore, are you? You're going to internalize mm -hmm. it. So it's it's making it it's punishing being open about your feelings as well. I feel I I absolutely hate the idea of this. I think it's really difficult when you start talking about a, a company whose business is to make money from this enterprise. Um, so you know. Um, a company such as Gaggle is trying to make money by selling this software into schools, mm -hmm. which they will do by uh, developing new features that are designed to sound um, impressive, but again, may take civil liberties away or, or may overstep the boundaries of, of what people assume to be um, acceptable. And they'll be mm -hmm. rolling, if, if, even if kids uh, and parents find out this software is in place, you know, if Gaggle or whoever introduces five, 10 more things that they're able to track and identify and data they're going to put out, are the school going to keep telling the children and parents that these new features are coming in? I, I really worry for. I, I think there is definitely a place for uh, encouraging um, web safety, um, and that there are um, certainly in the UK there are organisations that do that um, within schools, for example, teaching children about how to act online, particularly around strangers. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as you start to commercialise it and look at um, turning the students potentially into your into your revenue stream, uh, it's very dangerous. I think that's it's, a fantastic point, Neil. I mm, fully back mm. what you say there. Yeah, it's a revenue stream and that, yeah. <laughs> is there is there a, a line between um, monitoring and uh, protecting? I think protecting is, is less well-defined, but it, it sounds sounds loftier. You know, pe people are, are scared mm. about being monitored, but they, they may well like to be protected. But th then it comes down to, well, are you protecting by monitoring? <laughs> yeah. And there's then there's always the question of who watches the watchers, right? Because mm -hmm. they're a private enterprise, right? Who's regulating them, right? Who has oversight? Who's 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 verifying uh, these facts that they're putting out? So, I mean, I'm not sure how Gaggle actually um, actually monitors the content and stuff. Is it automated? Do we know, or is someone actually going through the content? Because then there's a bigger problem, like. 
Uh, mm. So there's a lot of talk about the mental health of the people that scare, screen content on like Facebook yeah. and uh, yeah. the police and stuff like that. It's it's awful, isn't it? And yeah, yeah, it's terrible. It can destroy you. Mm-hmm. Totally, totally. If we want to talk about uh, us in the workplace, I, I will throw in my, my one experience of this, which I, I have mentioned once on a podcast before. I mentioned it on screen testing last year. Um, I was, um, I'll say it's at least a decade ago. I don't want to say exactly who it was, just in case uh, the company gets in trouble. But um, I, I was taken into a room one day by a manager. Um, I could tell this story because there's been enough talk about adult content. That I, I, could, I could get away with this discussion here, I think, in this episode. Um, <laughs> There's, my manager clearly didn't want to have this conversation with me, but he, he was saying, um, we're seeing this really weird pattern from uh, your activity on your computer, Neil. It seems that several times a day you are typing um, the word anal into your computer. And I was like, first, first of all, well, thought, no, I'm at my desk. It's an open plan office. Of course I'm not. Secondly, <laughs> you're, doing, you're, you're doing what to work out what I'm doing? There's key locking or something going on? And yeah. after that baffling meeting, like, much, much later that day, I realized that I was doing loads of work with Google Analytics and the website address for that is <laughs> analytics.google.com. So I typed yeah. the first few letters into my browser, hit enter to autocomplete. And it was like, yeah. okay, that's why that word is <laughs> showing up. But also it was like, you did not tell me that you had a, a policy where you were going to be tracking our keystrokes or, or whatever. Um, yeah. That was, um, that's it's kind of the ex example. That's of, terrible. Um, yeah. So. I've got a recent story like this as well, but it ended up being good. So uh, I was testing, oh, I was testing um, unfurling. So like you enter in a URL and it unfurls. And so uh, I, I wanted to test a whole shitload of websites. Like you put in like 1000 and you see what happens, like how it unfurls and stuff like that. So I was like, right, where am I going to get a thousand URLs? Found a um, GitHub link with like a thousand URLs in it. I'm like, brilliant. Okay. So pasted it in the app. Um, and like some of them were 404 ing or like 400 ing. Um, and so I clicked on one of them and it had the word mum in it and it was straight up porn. And so I closed it and I messaged the IT support person and I'm like, well, I have just looked at uh, quite intense porn by accident. This is how it happened. I'm very sorry. I do not want to look at porn while I'm at work. I'm sorry. Um, and they didn't track that kind of thing anyway, so it was totally fine. He's like, thanks for saying, but don't worry, we don't track anyway. And I'm like, well, that's really nice working somewhere that doesn't track because we've recently had a like MDM put on our machines, which a lot of people were upset about. Um, but, yeah. But that's my funny story. Well, I, I think these these uh, software platforms have come a lot further. Um, and they've come a long way over the years. I, I certainly remember the early 2000s. I was doing work experience at the, the newspaper in Peterborough while I was doing my journalism degree. And we could not visit uh, any website um, that had the word Essex in the title, which was like the, a neighboring county or cl close by county. Um, that it was usually a web sense or something. It was just like, no, you've got the word sex in the URL. You cannot visit that website. Like it's... <laughs> We, what we, we can't ignore the fact that a county exists yeah <laughs> so i work somewhere where you couldn't look at like blogs online and it's like i need to use the internet mm. to find out what mm. i'm doing <laughs> like mm -hmm. yeah how am i meant to like figure out this problem without the internet it's absurd yeah mm. so we got some comments but on twitter about this um so simon Pryor said it all feels a bit 1984 absolutely agree mm -hmm. all the like uptick in monitoring everything's bloody monitored at the moment isn't it like you have doorbells mm. outside your house that monitors outside like everything um and then jenna charlton they said uh gaggle is dangerous it's ineffective lacks an understanding of context targets marginalized kids due to bias and most importantly children deserve privacy so jenna they mm. actually live in the us so they will have a bit more context um than we do i think um so yeah mm. it's really good to get some feedback from someone in the us as well thank you jenna it de definitely privacy i mean losing losing that trust you know it just pushes you away into other things either you don't talk about it or you just make another account you get another device right you, mm -hmm. you'll figure a way out yeah totally i i have always been someone who's actually been relatively blasé about the whole thing i i've been one of these 
terrible people who've said, I've got nothing to hide. I don't really care. You know, what's, mm-hmm. what's the worst that can happen if someone looks at my data? It's now getting scary because you don't know who is looking at your data or who is sharing it with whom and for what purpose. So mm-hmm. actually, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm becoming more aware of the data that I'm putting out there and, and you know, not just where mm-hmm. it is now, but where it may eventually be tallied up to. Um, like, um, yeah, because because you never know, particularly around things like doxing. Um, there's um, mm-hmm. actually, weirdly, the, the Peloton community on Reddit says with his peloton t-shirt on today um there's been some, some some uproar among that community recently because there's been a lot of uh people whose you know peloton leaderboard name that appears on the on the, on the bike um people have been matching them up to real world people like they're finding instagram accounts and starting contacting Ooh. people and saying you know um <laughs> wow. you're pedaling good can i see how you look and stuff like that and it's <laughs> It's like the way as soon as you know, it's like the whole we, we always thought big data was going to be this, you know, web 2.0 was going to be this amazing thing to free us all up. It's like, no, it, it's it's a scary minefield. So, my neighbor, um, is a actress in Emmerdale, and she used to have, um, oh, Strava, she used to have Strava because she does running and all this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But being a woman on Strava and in like someone that's in the like public eye. It's terrifying because people follow you around and stuff like that. Like mm. you can't, you can't have it. So she had to get rid of Strava because there were too many creeps, which is just awful. Like you have to be careful of where this information is getting put out. It's really sad. I guess in conclusion, I don't know. <laughs> uh, definitely privacy is a big thing. Um, I think that the world is, you know, a really dangerous place. And, you know, I think there has to be something we need a layer of security we need some type of support you know because like humans can't can't solve all these problems right they, they can't be teachers and like counselors and support workers everywhere all the time right we need ai to help out in some way so i think hmm, i like the idea of blocking stuff but yeah it it depends on the situation so the the like inappropriate images ai blocking that fine what mm. people are writing mm. in, like, in school assignments, that shouldn't be monitored because it can be so taken out of context. Um, yeah, yeah, searching the internet, blocking stuff, fine. Uh, yeah, writing assignments, that being put through AI, no, not fine, mm. Mm. in my opinion. I think we've been through this with other medium or mediums, me- media, <laughs> words today are terrible um <laughs> in, in in decades gone by i, I don't remember if you remember in the, the early 90s when particularly in the us they were trying to design this thing called the v chip for tvs that would detect when there was something that they didn't want you know some violent content or something like mm-hmm. nope we'll just just turn your screen off for you um these monitoring uh platforms are not a replacement for you know educating your children on, on how to behave or or you know yeah. keep an eye on them when they're doing things in their own time um yeah yeah. News bites. So there's some interesting news from the security space this week. After a pen testing organization found a security vulnerability in BrewDog's mobile app, which, among other things, could potentially allow somebody to get free beer for life. This was down to a flaw in the brewery's mobile app, which used the same hard-coded API bearer token for every single customer, meaning that it was relatively (laughs) trivial to retrieve basic details of anyone. And because BrewDog permits members to have a free free beer on their birthday, all you needed to do was go through the customers until you found someone whose birthday was today and you've got a free drink. BrewDog's response to this was not brilliant. They attempted to fix the issue in multiple beta builds <laughs> without telling customers or shareholders what was going on. And as a final kick in the teeth, BrewDog requested that their name, this is BrewDog, I'm just going to tell you it's BrewDog, BrewDog, their name should be kept out of the pen test report <laughs> uh, because it would open up users to uh, the risk that was unnecessary. So uh, there is a link to that pen test report. It's a really good example of what pen test is Yay! doing. And it's on uh, BrewDog. BrewDog. That's BrewDog. <laughs> oh, BrewDog are such like jerks anyway with the whole trying to um what they wanted to use the word punk and they like tried suing other companies that used it and it's like you're not fucking punk mm. you're a bunch of jokers mm-hmm. and this just shows what a bunch of absolute jokers they are i mean so i love how many people don't um properly understand the like whole identity api and 
Um, but because, oh my God, it's been years since I used it. Uh, RFC. So the like the RFC around all this kind of identity stuff is so beautiful. And like how to use API bearer tokens fucking beautiful no one mm -hmm. fucking reads them like there's clear mm -hmm. information on how to implement this but people are like i'm smarter than this rfc i'm gonna implement it myself no you're not it's a fucking awesome rfc so just use it sorry big rant there it's, it's all it's also not rocket science right no <laughs> it's you know it's authentication and security right yeah so it's easiest to, te to test for as well which uh yeah who is that again some beer company uh, i believe it was brew dog <laughs> oh, <Brewdog. laughs> okay great brew dog <laughs> <laughs> send us some free beer <laughs> okay. right, go on, brilliant okay cool so i stole this from neil because i was excited about it and uh he didn't get it in uh quick enough so yeah apologies neil um but yeah this is uh right up my street so tesla has released a self-driving mode update in a canary fashion which is marvelous so it's segment segmenting its users by safety score so the software update fds beta 10.2 was rolled out to around 1000 tesla owners with a perfect 100 out of 100 safety score which is taken over 100 miles um, they're going to be rolling it out slowly to scores 99 and below after canary testing with the highest scored drivers. Um, I think it's really sensible to canary test like this. But it's a like maybe a bit of a weird way to segment users because what they're doing is they're actually tracking their driving. So how this score is calculated is uh, it uses five metrics which calculate how likely the driver's driving could result in a future crash. And they're also using it currently for Tesla insurance, which is only available in California at the moment, but it's also rolling out to Texas. Um, but like what I think is really good about this as well is the scoring is opt-in. You request access to the full self-driving beta program on your car computer, and then it asks you um, and notifies you that your performance will be evaluated to determine eligibility. Um, so yeah, it's like, it's pretty cool that they're, so I really like that they're doing canary testing. I'm like, oh, they're tracking drivers. That seems sus. They're telling people that they're tracking them, which is totally fine mm. in my opinion. Um, and yeah, mm. like, it'd mm. be quite interesting to see how, like, I would I would be so wanting that 100 out of 100. I'm obsessed with like <laughs> braking perfectly and the smoothness. So yeah, like I would I would probably opt into that and love it, which is but, quite strange because what if, when like, I had an app on my phone. But what if a squirrel runs out in in the road in front of you? Are you just going to put your foot down because you want to keep that 100 out of 100? You know, because you, if you brake sharply, you don't get your software updates. That's true. So yeah, yeah, yeah that that is, is it really the squirrel or your score. <laughs> I think I think I'd have to save the squirrel. I would. Well, no, it wouldn't be think. I would have to save the bloody squirrel. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because uh, I had this for my insurance company, and with the app, they were like, "Oh, you, like we can track your driving." I'm like, "No, piss off." Um, but they weren't giving me fancy app releases. You can track my driving if you're going to give me fancy app releases, I guess. <laughs> I do, I do love, I do love Teslas. I love how they've just turned your car into a computer, basically. It's lovely. They're welcome to sponsor us anytime they want. Yes, I asked... You can send us free Teslas. So I asked Tesla if they'd like to sponsor us for the Leeds Testing Atelier, no and they didn't. Uh, but, oh. I mean, you know, it's worth a try. I'm just like, fuck it. Like, yeah. let's go for the big boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Elon, if you're listening, Gwenny's looking for you. It's true. If you could put Shatner in space, you'd give us some stickers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it wasn't him who put Shatner in space, was it? Wasn't no, it, it was uh, Bezos. It was, yeah, it was, it Jeff, was Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Yeah. I really liked yeah. how he just stared. Um, <laughs> yeah. They're all, any any old random crazy millionaire, who cares? <laughs> They're all the same. Yeah. <laughs> The wash up. 
thanks so much for tuning in. It was really amazing to have you here. Uh, I think we had a really nice episode, uh, some really tough topics. Um, so yeah, we'd love to hear your opinions on those. Um, and yeah, looks like we're going to need another content warning on this one. Uh, we're getting into some heavy stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so any feedback that you have, we'd absolutely love. Uh, please consider subscribing. Uh, so yeah, on YouTube or uh, Anchor. Yeah, love to see you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Tech Team Weekly.